What's up guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to get iOS 7 Beta 1 on your device right now and tell you why you shouldn't get iOS 7 on your device. So Apple actually announced iOS 7 just the other day at their WWDC event uh, and it is available to developers right now if you have a paid developer account which costs $99 per year. Uh, for everyone else, it will be available to the public uh, later this fall. Now the main reason I'll make this video is because iOS 7 Beta 1 is leaked and is out there to the public for anybody to download whether you're a developer or not and you can install it on your device. But normally how it works if you have a beta firmware on your device is your device actually has to be connected to a registered paid developer account which again costs $99 per year or if you install it on there you won't be able to activate your phone until you're connected with a developer account. But as of right now with the first beta of iOS 7 you can actually install it. You don't have to be connected to a developer account but this I'm guessing will probably change in the future. Probably with beta 2 uh, when they release that very soon uh, you'll have to be connected to a developer account or you won't be able to use it. Now what this means if you have already updated to iOS 7 and you're not connected to a developer account that firmware the beta 1 will expire shortly after beta 2 is released and you will be forced to update to beta 2 if you want to use your phone and then if they require you to be connected to a developer account and you're not your phone is pretty much bricked until you can either get connected to a developer account or until iOS 7 uh, official release is out later in the fall do you want to be able to not use your phone until later in the fall don't think so. But if you don't want to take my word on it and you want to continue anyways and get iOS 7 on your device, I'm going to tell you how. Now I'm going to say you have to be registered to a developer account because you don't want to continue on and do this if you're not. Trust me, listen to me on this. You can right now, but you probably won't be able to in the future. Now either you can pay for your own Apple developer account, which again is $99 and you can sign up and you can add your own device, uh, or you can just get a friend that has an Apple developer account and get them to add you to their account uh, with your UDID code, which I'll tell you how to get in just a few minutes. Or you can actually go to one of the many UDID activation websites, uh, which means uh, you pay like five to eight bucks, you give them your UDID code for your device and they will actually connect your uh, device to their Apple developer account for a price. Again, around five to eight bucks. Don't pay really any more than that. So if you don't have a friend who is an Apple developer and you don't mind paying a couple bucks to get your iPhone registered under developer account, I will give a link in the description down below to a Google search which will search for like UDID registrations. It will give you tons of sites there. Uh, I'm not saying to go to any of those sites uh, or like saying any of them work. They could uh, just take your five to eight bucks or whatever it is uh, and then never register your device. If that's up to you. It's all on you. I'm just telling you what you have to do if you actually want to do this. So once you got your site picked out and you're ready to pay them and give them your UDID code to register your phone or give it to your friend, uh, you got to plug your iPhone up to your computer, go into iTunes, go to the device tab in iTunes, and you're going to click the little option that says uh, serial number, and then what it'll do it is it'll, it'll switch to a different number and it'll give you your unique identif uh, identifier, which is your UDID. You're going to want to type out that code, copy it so you make sure you have it, save it somewhere so you don't lose it just in case, and that is the code you're going to give one of those websites or your friend to register your device under their developer account. Now what you need to do is download iOS 7. Uh, make sure you get the right version of iOS 7 for your device because there are specific ones for each uh, iPhone, iPod and stuff like that. Uh, so go to the link in the description down below. It'll say like iOS 7 downloads or iOS 7 beta downloads. Click that. Go there, download the right one for your device, and save it to your desktop. Now with the iPhone 5, there's actually two different software updates for the model number of iPhone you have. You can find this out by looking at the bottom uh, right uh, of the back of your iPhone. It says model, and mine is A1428. Uh, yours may be A1429. Uh, make sure you get the right software update that correlates with your iPhone model that you have, or it won't work. If you get a .dmg file, just go ahead and double click on that. You'll see the firmware file in that. Go ahead and drag and drop that to your desktop and then you're pretty much ready to go and ready to uh, install iOS 7. Now go ahead and open up iTunes. Uh, make sure it is updated to the latest version. If it's not updated to the latest version, you'll have problems and it won't work. So go ahead and do that. And after you're done, reboot your computer, restart it. So that way everything's ready to go, good to go. You're not going to run into any errors. Now, this is really important. This is the most important step. 
back up your phone to iTunes or to iCloud so that way you do not lose any of your data if you are doing it to iTunes make sure you actually sync all that stuff up not make just a backup sync it all up so you see that it is on your computer so that way you can sync it all back so you won't lose all your contacts all your photos all your data and stuff like that sync everything and back it up because you could have a problem doing this and you could lose everything make sure I prefer iCloud just because it's stored on the web it's a lot easier iTunes uh, and it's it's ready to go when I want it to uh, so yeah I'd suggest doing iCloud but if you want to you can use iTunes now what you need to do is go ahead and plug your device up to your computer open iTunes again go to the device tab in iTunes and you're going to hold the shift key on Windows or the option key on Mac and you're going to click the check for update option in iTunes on the uh, device tab then you're going to get a little pop-up window that lets you select a firmware file. Uh, what you want to do is select that file that you downloaded earlier for iOS 7 uh, that you drug to your desktop. So go ahead and select that, double click on it. It should automatically start installing it on your iPhone. I uh, just give it a little bit. Uh, you may run into some errors. If you do, uh, make sure you check the description down below because I'll have some stuff that may uh, help you out there. Uh, just make sure everything's updated, your computer's been rebooted, stuff like that, uh, and you should be good to go. And uh, once that's done, you should have uh, iOS iOS 7 on your uh, device just like I do right here so there you go that's pretty much it you should now have iOS 7 beta 1 on your device now make sure you keep up to date with this because as soon as iOS beta 2 comes out you're gonna need to update to it because again this beta 1 is going to expire and if you don't update in time before it expires your device is pretty much gonna be bricked until you update to the newest beta uh, which again could possibly lock you out if you're not connected to a developer account. So this is all on you. It's your risk. If you want to give it a try, I'm just telling you how to do it. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if it did help you out, please click the like button down below. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this, more videos on iOS 7, uh, and all kinds of other tech and Apple stuff. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.